John Hughes was an influential producer, writer, and director. He was the driving force behind the teen comedy boom of the mid-1980s. Hughes wrote and directed colorful films that both celebrated and dissected the American adolescent experience. A prolific filmmaker until his untimely death in 2009. Hughes' back catalog is a mix of enduring nostalgia and timeless comedy. Here are 10 of his best films. I'm your host, Dennis, and the criteria I base this list on are, personal opinion, the commercial success of the film, and input from my friends over at Cinephiles. Before we get started, leave a comment below. What's your favorite John Hughes film? You should consider whether or not you feel you can deliver a kiss that kills. In 1987, the Brat Pack began to lose steam. Hughes and his go-to director, Howard Deutsch, found fresh faces for their latest and last teen film, Some Kind of Wonderful. It stars Eric Stoltz as working-class Keith, Leah Thompson as the dream girl Amanda, Craig Sheffer as her arrogant boyfriend, and Mary Stuart Masterson as a punky drummer named Watts. Hughes wrote this thoughtful, romantic drama about a working-class high school student whose crush on a wealthy, popular girl prevents him from recognizing his true soulmate. Waiting nearby with drumsticks in hand, the film script contains a beautifully written scene in which Eric Stoltz, the young grease monkey, admits to his father that he's one of those guys that just don't fit in. My sisters absolutely love this movie, and I've seen it more times than I care to admit. I don't have one. How come? I don't need one. Where's your wife? Don't have one. How come? It's a long story. Uncle Buck was the first film in a multi-picture deal that John Hughes would write, produce, and direct. The film stars John Candy as Uncle Buck, an unemployed cigar-smoking gambler who is tasked with watching his three young nieces and nephew. The film was a commercial success and spawned two short-lived television spin-offs, both of which were poorly received. Star John Candy was a close friend of Hughes, and according to Vince Vaughn, Hughes talked a lot about how much he loved Candy. Uncle Buck was released in theaters on August 16, 1989 by Universal Pictures, and it grossed $79.2 million against a $15 million budget. The film also introduced us to Macaulay Culkin, who would later be amused for a future film. Inspired by the psychedelic fur's gritty pop ballad, the era-defining teen film Pretty in Pink stars Ringwald as working-class Andy and Andrew McCarthy as wealthy Blaine, whose Romeo and Juliet romance is thwarted by rich kid villain Steph, played by James Spader. The story is paper-thin, but rich in real emotions and hard truths. Most of them absorbed by the misfit Ducky, played by John Cryer, one of Hughes' most touching creations. An alternate ending of the classic comedy, in which Andy ended up with Ducky, rather than Blaine, was filmed and test audiences responded to it negatively. Ducky doesn't know he's gay, Ringwald told Out Magazine. I think he loves Andy in the way that my gay best friend always loved me. That ending fell so flat, it bombed at the screenings. I didn't realize it then. I just knew that my character shouldn't end up with him because we didn't have that sort of chemistry. If John was here now and I could talk to him, I think he would completely acknowledge that. So that begs the question, was Ducky in the closet? She's gotten her boobies. Oh, <laughs> I'd better go get my magnifying glass. After seeing Molly Ringwald's photo and a stack of headshots, Hughes pinned it above his desk and wrote 16 Candles with her in mind. Ringwald's first role as Hughes' muse is Samantha Baker, a skinny sophomore pining for a hunky senior. Hughes, who also directs the film, established his formula here, a protagonist, an unattainable crush, a third wheel, and various clueless adults. Though blemished by its infamous Asian jokes, Sixteen Candles remains one of Hughes' best-loved films. This is 
my house. I have to defend it. Where's your mother? My mom's in the car. Where's your father? He's at work. What about your brothers and sisters? I'm an only child. Where do you live? Can't tell you that. Why not? Because you're a stranger. One of Hughes' thinnest scripts, an abandoned kid thwarts burglars using a wily e. coyote type arsenal. It became one of the biggest hits, starring little Macaulay Culkin as Kevin McAllister. Plus, Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern as the bad guys. Home Alone featured lively, cartoonish direction from Chris Columbus, who originally was hired to direct another Hughes film, Christmas Vacation. The film was originally meant to be distributed by Warner Brothers, but was transferred to 20th Century Fox when Hughes exceeded the $10 million budget. I'm sure they later regretted that decision when the film raked in $17 million in its opening weekend. It was the number one film at the box office for 12 straight weeks. From its release weekend of November 16, 1990 through the weekend of February 1, 1991, the film was listed in the Guinness World Records as the highest grossing live action comedy ever and held the record until it was overtaken by The Hangover 2 in 2011. You guys give up or you're thirsty for more? Are you gonna go for it? This is crazy, this is crazy, this is crazy! National Lampoon's Vacation was based on a short story by Hughes conceived for the magazine The National Lampoon entitled Vacation 58, which he then turned into a screenplay to be directed by the legendary Harold Ramis. The film follows the Griswold family on a tumultuous cross-country expedition to the amusement park Wally World in a clunky old Vista Cruiser. The film was a critical and commercial success and would help launch Hughes' career as well as inspire three sequels and a reboot in 2015. It has since been recognized as one of the most influential comedies of all time. What are you looking at? Oh, the silent majesty of a winter's morn, the clean, cool chill of the holiday air, and an asshole in his bathrobe emptying a chemical toilet into my sewer. <laughs> Following the success of National Lampoon's Vacation, a sequel, National Lampoon's European Vacation, followed with very little input from Hughes. According to Hughes, the studio came to me and begged for another one, and I only agreed because I had a good story to base it on. The film would become National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and would focus on the Griswold family's hijinks-fueled Christmas celebration. It is often celebrated as the best sequel in the Vacation series, and though it would be the last in the series with input from Hughes, it also spawned a direct sequel, which was widely panned. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. The screenplay for Ferris Bueller's Day Off was written by Hughes, who also directed and co-produced the film, in less than a week. The film follows Ferris, a high school slacker, who along with his girlfriend Sloane and best friend Cameron decide to skip school for a day. The film features many prominent Chicago landmarks throughout, as Hughes explains, I really wanted to capture as much of Chicago as I could, not just in the architecture and landscape, but the spirit. The film was a monumental success and was selected for preservation by the Library of Congress in the United States National Film Registry in 2014. Bueller, Ferris Bueller. Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows. When their pre-Thanksgiving flight is grounded, prickly businessman Neil Page, played by Steve Martin, and gregarious salesman Del Griffith, played by John Candy, are thrown together on a road trip from Kansas to Chicago. The adult characters in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles marked a shift for Teen King Hughes, and the movie became not only a crowd pleaser, but a modern classic. Candy gives a career best performance. He'd always been likable and was able to show some range. 
Martin is sublime as a stuck-up cranky bastard. This film was a far departure from Hughes' trademark teenage angst films, and it still holds up today. Rumors of a reboot is in the works with Kevin Hart and Will Smith. Before we get to our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Weird Science was a decent movie for its time, but didn't really age well. And while researching for this video, I really tried to watch it, but turned it off midway through. I may be alone on this one, but I enjoyed this movie when it first came out, and you can't go wrong with Ed O'Neill. The Great Outdoors is another film that aged well and is still pretty good after all these years. She's Having a Baby was a film I couldn't really get into, but I'm giving it an honorable mention on behalf of fellow cinephile Michael Hartnett, who loved the film and soundtrack. Chicks cannot hold a smoke. That's what it is. Hughes shattered conventional thinking with the landmark team film The Breakfast Club set largely in a single room where the characters mostly just talk. The now iconic cast of Ringwald, Hall, Judd Nelson, Emilio Estevez, and Ali Sheedy breathed life into their new roles as kids from different social cliques. And writer-director Hughes used them to explore deep-reaching issues of identity and loneliness. Emilio Estevez originally auditioned for the role of John Bender. However, when Hughes was unable to find someone to play Andrew Clark, Estevez was recast. Nicolas Cage was considered for the role of John Bender, which was the last role to be cast. Though the role was narrowed down to John Cusack and Judd Nelson, Hughes originally cast Cusack, but decided to replace him with Nelson before shooting the film because Cusack didn't look threatening enough for the role. At one point, Hughes was disappointed in Nelson because he stayed in character and harassed Ringwald off camera. The other actors having to convince Hughes not to fire him. Rick Moranis was originally cast as the janitor but left due to creative differences and was replaced. The result was electrifying not to mention a $50 million hit on a $1 million budget. In 2016, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. And even today, The Breakfast Club remains the gold standard of its genre. I'd like to thank you for checking us out. And if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos just like this.